On the 23rd of June, 2018, a day destined to mark a festive occasion turned to one fraught with fear and uncertainty. When 12 young boys, along with their assistant football coach, embarked on an exploratory adventure in the Chiang Rai province of Thailand. Their destination was a cave deep beneath a towering mountain, whose depths would soon encapsulate a remarkable tale of heroism, endurance, and the epitome of human solidarity. The day had dawned in the rural village of Mei Sai district with preparations for a birthday celebration. Pirapat Sompyang Jai was turning 17. His family had joyously assembled a SpongeBob birthday cake and festooned his home with colorfully wrapped presents. But Pirapat had other plans first, plans that involved his friends from the local youth football team called the Wild Boars and their assistant coach, Ekapol Ake Chantawong. The boys' football practice culminated in a spirited race through the lush green rice paddies and up into the forested hills that had recently been soaked by rain. The Tam Luang Cave awaited them, a place etched with folklore, a hidden world rich with nooks and crannies that the boys loved to explore. To them, this was a ritual ground, a place where they had ventured eight kilometers into the darkness to commemorate new team members. Upon arriving at the mouth of the cave, the boys and their coach stashed their bicycles and bags and made their way inside, their way lit by simple torches. They intended to stay but an hour. But back at Pirapat's home, as his untouched birthday cake lay as evidence of his absence, the first tendrils of worry began to creep into the minds of his family. The cave, named Tam Luang Kun Nam Nang Non, translates to the great cave and water source of the Sleeping Lady Mountain. Snaking for 10 kilometers beneath the majestic cloud-swathed mountain range separating Thailand and Myanmar, it has been both a favorite destination for adventurers and a notorious trap during the monsoon season. Known to flood up to five meters, it could turn from a place of innocent exploration to a perilous labyrinth, especially for inexperienced divers. The torrential rains of the past few days had taken their toll, and the cave system was fast filling up. The wild boars found themselves trapped, unable to exit and forced to scramble deeper into the cave's embrace. They were marooned on a small rocky shelf, four kilometers from the entrance, in a normally dry area known as Pattaya Beach, which was now flooded. Engulfed by an unyielding mountain, their world became one of darkness and a sense of time lost. Fear might have been a natural response, but determination to survive prevailed. The group carved a five-meter deep cavern to huddle together. Coach Ake, a former monk, became their beacon of strength, guiding them in meditation techniques to conserve air and energy. Though food was absent, they had drinkable water from the cave walls and enough air for a time, filtered through porous limestone. In that dark place, they had each other, and they had hope. Outside, panic had taken hold of the parents, and the alarm was raised. A relentless rescue operation was launched with the involvement of elite Thai Navy SEALs, national police, local volunteers, and various rescue teams. Footprints were found, but no signs of the boys. They were hidden somewhere within the twisted depths of Tam Luang, a place now wrapped in uncertainty and danger. A daunting rescue mission was in motion. As the clock ticked and monsoon rains poured, the daunting task lay ahead, filled with uncertainty, desperation, and the unrelenting pursuit of hope. The cave's water levels were rising menacingly, an uncontrolled surge threatening to engulf chambers and bar access to the rescuers. Most of the Thai Navy divers engaged in the mission had little experience with cave diving, and the weather was showing no mercy. The sense of urgency led to frantic attempts to pump water out of the cave, a task that initially met with great difficulty. Desperation drove officials to gather an assortment of equipment, from small water pumps and lengthy pipes to knives and shovels. Yet much of it proved unsuitable for the unique demands of this rescue. Drilling into the mountainside became an option, as the desire to find cracks into the cave system grew more acute. Thermal sensor-equipped drones hovered above, hunting for signs of the trapped boys. In this intense atmosphere, the Thai Navy SEALs turned to locals. A boy who was a member of the Wild Boar's soccer team but had missed the expedition provided insight. He recalled Pattaya Beach, a location within the complex they had visited before. Could the missing boys be there? At the entrance of the cave, a vigil had formed. 
The families of the boys, weighed down by worry, offered prayers. Concerned teachers, school administrators, and classmates joined the vigil, sending songs of encouragement into the cave's depths, folding paper cranes and pinning messages of hope. A communal spirit emerged as villagers contributed money and food. The nation's eyes turned to Tom Luang, and volunteers poured in from across Thailand. The story began to resonate globally, reaching a crescendo on Thursday, the 28th of June, when international rescuers arrived. Specialists from the U.S. Air Force, cave divers from the U.K., Belgium, Australia, Scandinavia, and other countries joined the Thai divers in a struggle against nature's fury. Days were marked by battles against strong currents and rising floodwaters, each victory punctuated by setbacks. Then, on Sunday, the 1st of July, a breakthrough came in the form of Chamber 3, a large cavern that would become central to the mission. On Monday, two British divers, John Valanthan and Rick Stanton, reached Pattaya Beach only to find it empty. Pressing on into the enveloping darkness, they encountered an air pocket. They surfaced, shouted and smelled, a standard procedure in rescue operations. Suddenly, the torch's light unveiled an electrifying sight. The boys were alive. A count was made, and the thrilling response of 13 echoed through the cave. The elation was palpable, a moment frozen in time, captured on camera, and shared with a world holding its breath. Thank you. How, how many of you? 13? Brilliant. Outside the cave, families that had been burdened with anxiety rejoiced at the miraculous survival of their children. Although thin, they were found in relatively good shape. After nine agonizing days without the sun's embrace, the boys and their coach found company in the arrival of a military medic and Navy SEAL divers who would become their guardians through the remaining days of their ordeal. Their spirits were momentarily uplifted by the sight of light, and their minds wandered to thoughts of Pad Krapau, a rice dish stir-fried with meat and basil, the flavors of home they longed for. However, the doctor's stringent orders consigned them to a special diet of medicated liquid food and vitamin-enhanced mineral water. Trapped with them, Dom, a third boy on the team, celebrated his birthday in the cave's grim embrace. A daunting question loomed over the rescuers. How to extract 13 souls, including those who couldn't swim, from a treacherous, flooded four-kilometer stretch that even seasoned divers would find challenging. This rescue mission had transformed the small town of Mei Tsai into an international focal point. Journalists and volunteers swarmed the district, and a makeshift town sprang to life near the cave's entrance. Food stalls appeared, offering hot noodles, chicken rice, and even ice lollies. The Thai Royal Kitchen staff were among those serving free sustenance to the multitude engaged in the rescue. From cleaning overused and dirty toilets to providing free lifts and laundering mud-soaked clothes, no task was deemed too small. A spirit of unity prevailed until a tragedy struck, casting a somber shadow over the community. Former Navy SEAL diver Saman Gunan, a 38-year-old volunteer, drowned on the 6th of July while delivering air tanks to the trapped boys. It might be because of the cave's complexity, Saman's mouthpiece fell off. He tried to grab it, but he couldn't find it. He tried to take out the spare one, but due to the complexity of the cave, he lost his breath. His buddy tried first aid on him by using his spare mouthpiece, but it didn't work. Saman's life slipped away. A fit and seasoned diver who had even represented Thailand in triathlons, his death was a grim reminder of the perilous nature of the mission. The situation grew more dire as oxygen levels in the chamber dropped to a mere 15%, intensifying the urgency to decide between three daunting options. Training the boys to dive, a potentially disastrous choice, pumping water and waiting, which might take four months, or finding or drilling alternative passages. The divers began practicing with local boys, simulating underwater transportation. Other suggestions, such as Elon Musk's kid-sized submarine, were deemed unsuitable. The labyrinthine layout of the cave turned even basic tasks into challenges. It was not until late on the 6th of July that an oxygen supply was established, and the boys and their families resorted to communicating through handwritten letters. Time was running out, and the handwritten letters revealed the depths of the boys' emotions. 
They expressed love, apologies, food cravings, and even humor. I'm really sorry to the parents, wrote Coach Ake, only to receive gratitude and love in return. Sunday, the 7th of July, marked a turning point. Suddenly, without warning, the decision was made. The boys were to be brought out. There is no other day that we are more ready than today, announced Narongsak Osotanakorn, the head of the rescue operations. Journalists and volunteers were ushered away from the site, and a brisk, steely mood descended over the rescue camp. The rains that had relentlessly battered May Sai had abated, granting the rescuers a rare reprieve. Moreover, locals had warned the Thai Navy SEALs that by the 10th of July, the cave system would be utterly submerged. The stage was set for a superhuman rescue effort, mobilizing nearly 100 Thai and foreign divers in an operation unparalleled in its complexity and danger. The first phase of the rescue, from the boys' rocky perch to Chamber 3, was the most perilous. In the pitch-dark, bone-chilling waters, rescuers painstakingly navigated for hours, guided by ropes. Some passages were so narrow that they could barely accommodate a human body. Each boy was fitted with a full-face air mask, linked to a diver, while another accompanied them. Navigating these tight crevices, rescuers were forced to unstrap their air tanks to squeeze through, all the while managing their precious cargo. The boys, who were not strong swimmers, were draped in wet suits with face masks and were administered the sedative ketamine by Australian diver and anesthesiologist Dr. Richard Harris to render them unconscious, a precaution for their protection and the protection of divers. Upon reaching Chamber 3, the second phase began. The boys were strapped to stretchers and carried through various obstacles by teams of five men. The journey involved winching them up steep slopes, forming human chains to pass them hand to hand and sliding them across pipes that pumped out water. For the divers, the experience was nerve-wracking, but one by one, the wild boars were liberated from the cold and dark embrace of Tom Luang. Oxygen was administered, and they were swiftly transported to a hospital in Chiang Rai City. Over three days, they were extracted in three batches, all while water levels menacingly began to rise once more. The final extraction occurred on Tuesday, 10 July, the very day locals had predicted the cave would flood entirely. Yet even as the boys were safe, the Navy SEAL divers, Medic and Richard Harris, a renowned Australian cave diving expert and doctor, remained on the rocky ledge. Their emergence came just in time, as a pump suddenly failed and floodwaters surged in. Workers scrambled, fleeing the onslaught. It was a narrow escape following an astonishing feat. In Chiang Rai, a city that had become the focal point of a global drama, exultant crowds gathered on the streets, as the ambulances approached, carrying the boys who had endured a harrowing ordeal, the cheers swelled to a crescendo and car horns began blaring in a triumphant symphony of celebration. Meanwhile, in the hospital, the boys were beginning to comprehend the magnitude of their rescue. Donned in sterile gowns and wearing protective face masks, they sat up in their hospital beds, still weak but visibly elated. Television cameras captured their smiles and their waves to the world. A week later, the boys and their coach were released from the hospital, their physical wounds healed, though the emotional scars would take longer to mend. Facing the public, they offered heartfelt apologies for the trouble they had caused, their voices tinged with humility and gratitude. The rescuers were left to reflect on the unprecedented achievement. In the end, that tiny bit of hope became reality. The story of the lost wild boars could have ended in tragedy, but instead it became an inspiring story of hope, survival, and unity. It bore witness to ordinary people from across the globe converging in a remote Thai town with a singular mission, to save 12 young lives and their coach. The world watched and hoped, and in the end, their prayers were answered. The wild boars were home, safe and sound, their ordeal a testament to human resilience, compassion, and the extraordinary feats we are capable of when we come together. Thank you so much for watching. We appreciate your time and hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked what you saw, be sure to check out the other great content on our channel. Your support means the world to us, and we can't wait to bring you more. Thank you again, and see you in the next video.